It's the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Houston Texans and the Cincinnati Bengals. Next on Madden NFL 24. On a picture-perfect Midwestern afternoon for football, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Paycor Stadium in Cincinnati. Today, we've got a fun AFC matchup on tap as it'll be the Houston Texans taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, it feels like the latest golden age of quarterbacks in the NFL. There are good ones up and down the league everywhere, but one of the best certainly resides right here in Cincinnati, and that's Joe Burrow. And Joe Cool, Joey B, whatever you want to call him, not only does he perform big time on the field, he is that magnet that pulls other players to him. A lot of guys want to get to Cincinnati and play on Joe Burrow's team. Meanwhile, for the Texans, things are changing rapidly in the Space City. They've got the new coach and D'Amico Ryans coming over from the Niners. They made two big splashes on draft night, but fixing the defense seems a priority. And remember the 2022 draft? They took a lot of guys on that side of the ball, so maybe we just need a little bit more seasoning with some of the talent that they've accumulated. We are set to go. Evan McPherson to do the honors, and we are underway from Cincinnati. And he returns this to the 22. So here are the Texans now with a fresh face at quarterback, the second overall pick from Ohio State, C.J. Stroud. In only two seasons, Stroud showed all he needed to at Ohio State. All-American, Heisman Finals, program records galore. He looked every bit like the number one overall pick. He went number two, but Houston is thrilled to have him. Well, man, coming off a great rookie year, it's Damian Pierce. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Ball at the 23, second and eight. Stroud to throw it. That's to the veteran. It's Robert Woods. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. A pickup of 11 at a Texans first down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. First and 10, it's Pierce. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Throwing now is Stroud. Now, a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down and Stroud now to throw able to find the open man that's complete and he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40 a big one there for the Texans 18 yards well a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this you have to think about your tight end and he comes through for him picking up the first down So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 41. Stroud. And a double coverage and it's intercepted. Picked by Logan Wilson. And the Bengals are going to get it back here just past the 35. Time will tell if that's an interception that rattles the rookie here. First drive on the road. And you know the discussion going into the game? 
centered on, okay, let's get out nice and easy, take care of the football, we're on the road. You're a youngster, let's not make mistakes early. But now the conversation will shift to, okay, put it behind you, move on. Long way to go on this one. The Bengals now set for their first possession, and it's pro bowler Joe Burrow who leads this offense in his fourth season now out of LSU. Burrow may be young in his career, but he's helming the Bengals to one of the best stretches they've ever seen. 12 wins last year, which matched the team record, and they made a conference championship game in back-to-back -back seasons for the first time ever. At the center of it all is the man they call Joey B. 35 touchdown passes last year and almost 4,500 yards. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. He used to work relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? First down, here's Burrow. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. They bring the safety on the blitz, and he busts through to drop him for an eight-yard loss. How about that? One of the so-called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. Now Burrow to throw on second down. And the pressure gets to him again. That was Will Anderson getting home and finishing the play. One of the best in the NFL in no small part because of his running ability. But on that play, didn't matter to the defense at all. Nice stop for them, a feather in their cap for getting the sack and brought down one of the toughest guys to catch in the NFL. So that'll leave Burrow and the Bengals with a third and long after that sack we just saw. He'll drop to throw. And that is incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. So on fourth down, on is Brad Robbins to punt for the Bengals. Back deep is Tank Dell. Fielded just inside the 30. It's a 39-yard punt, eight on the return, and the Texans will take over with a first and 10. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. And they were intercepted the first time they had the football, but now they get it back and it's still 0-0. And because of that, you know what the thought process is? Interception. What interception? It didn't really happen because they gave up no points. So go back on the attack. Go back and run the offense you believe will be successful. Find your playmakers and give them the football. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. That's a very nice game there. A confidence-building run. Love the execution up front, and the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. First and 10, it's Stroud. Catch is made, it's Schultz on the out route. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And that's how you shake off the interception you threw on the opening drive, come back and throw another strike and gain nice yardage. And I give credit to two people on this one, the man throwing the ball and the person calling the plays. They're not shutting him down early in this game. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Now here's Stroud. This will be caught by Brown. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. Two chunk plays in a row. The last one was over 20 yards, and so is this one. Well, it certainly doesn't matter if it's been through the air like on this play or on the ground. I don't know what's going on with this defense. In a sense, they've been AWOL on this drive so far. Three plays, three first downs given up. They've got to find the answers, and they've got to find them quick. Now Stroud. throw here's incomplete that was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback
quarterback to lock in on a receiver, and it results in an incomplete pass. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. A run for Pierce out of the gun, and that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here, brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. And this is going to be intercepted. And the Bengals are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. And the defense, Charles, they bent a little bit, but they did not break. And then on third and goal, there's a huge interception. Think of the momentum they're carrying with them right now, Brandon, because in their mind, whether they want to admit it or not, they were conceding three points. Their goal was to keep them out of the end zone, not give up a touchdown. Instead, they give up nothing. What a big-time play and a big-time stop by them. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. He gets this one to Boyd. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Here's Burrow. Man open, that's Jamal Chase complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. First catch so far by Chase, it's a first down. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere, and they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people, but you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well, and that's what they just did on that play. Mixon with a first down carry. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. From the 42-yard line, here's second down at seven. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. Over the middle, that's caught by Chase. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle, and they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where Every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Boy, that ball's just hanging up there, waiting to be intercepted. That looked doomed from the start, but they took the deep shot anyway, and fortunately, it winds up incomplete. Now here's Brad Robbins now. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Now comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And it's been a miserable start for them offensively, obviously. Two drives, two interceptions. And this is where you have to know your quarterback and know how you actually have to reach him. Do you do it with a little bit of humor? Maybe you break the ice a little bit like, hey, didn't we practice in that color jersey all week, <laughs> not the one that you're throwing it to? Or maybe you have to be stern with him. But whatever it's going to take to get the message, it has to be done. He's putting the game in jeopardy. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Swings this one out wide for Pierce. Call it a gain of three on the play, and it'll be second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain.
Stroud looking to throw. And he'll get this underneath to Singletary. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. We often talk about understanding the playbook, understanding progressions, and understanding what the defense is doing. We saw all of that on that play. Great recognition and understood where his running back was going to be. Found a way to have him leak out underneath, hit him with the football, and they picked up the first down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? From the 43, here's a second down and nine. Stroud will look to throw once more. And this is caught. It's Brown. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 39. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. And that's now four completions in a row, a good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are going to happen. So the big trick, don't let it affect you going forward. Most of the good quarterbacks, they just tell the ball boy, get that one out of the rotation, give me a fresh ball. And let's go. He's got his offense moving again. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps him advancing the ball. This second and four. They run with the former Buffalo Bill, Devin Singletary. And just good downhill running there as he'll take this to the 15-yard line. Give him 17 on the pick up there, and the Texans also get a new set of downs. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. That'll give them eight that time, and they'll be left with second and a couple. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. On second down, here's Pierce. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. A five-yard game there makes it first and goal. No score after one on EA Sports. Texans football to start quarter two as they go to work on a first and goal. Here's Pierce. Trying to get to the goal line, but he's going to be stopped just short at the one. Only a yard that time, second and goal. Good work there, holding him out on first down. And this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two, maybe even three more plays? Second and goal from the one. They'll toss this to Pierce on the right side. And he's in for the score. Touchdown, Texans. Damian Pierce punching it in from a yard away. And the Texans post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. 
And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. Looking to pass. A quick throw there is incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. Now it's Burrow. He completes it to Boyd. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. From the gun on third down is Burrow. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. He got 29 yards that time. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Burrow will throw. Throwing the out route, finding Boyd for the completion. They'll give him four yards there, and that's going to bring up second down. Now Burrow. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 22-yard line. The Bengals' passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Throwing again, it's Burrow. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Sheldon Rankins abruptly ends that play with a sack. These sacks now, they're starting to pile up, Charles. And that front seven defensively, they've had their way with this offensive line. And I think at this stage, we have to start thinking about different play calls. We've got to start helping this quarterback out because... The entire game, he's been under siege. I don't care what the down and distance, they've got to get the ball out of his hands a lot quicker. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. And that's going to be caught, T. Higgins. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Press coverage on the outside, and for defenders, that's the ultimate risk-reward. If you take the risk, can you reward yourself by keeping them on the line of scrimmage? But no, not on that one. Got to step on them. Now it's just a matter of laying the ball out there for him to go get it. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. Touchdown, Bengals! Touchdown throw from Joe Burrow. And the Bengals are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. Certainly there are good things about quick strike offenses that score fast, but a long drive can also work to your advantage as well. In so many ways, Brandon, because number one, you get them tired, but the big one is mentally. They can't figure out how to slow you down, how to get off the field, how to get the ball back. They go to the bench wondering, what are we going to do next time in order to stop those guys? Extra point by McPherson, up and good, and we are tied at seven. 
So that drive goes eight plays. And it was Jamar Chase who finished it off with a touchdown reception. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Taken at the goal line. Now a hit and a loose football. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it. comes Houston and they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown and confidence is powerful isn't it when you've scored once you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again doesn't matter what the defense throws at them they feel like they're in a groove right now and they want to get out there and show it yeah hoping to stay in that groove here this go around Play action. Here's Stroud. He's got it to Collins complete. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. That's good for 28 yards. Well, with the problems they've had giving away the football in this first half, they've got to be over the moon that this is still a tie ball game. So here's where a quarterback has to move the turnovers to the back of his mind and focus on the present. And that's a good throw there to pick up a first down. Pierce takes it straight ahead. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. 41 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. Second down and four. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Throw left side complete. That's Woods. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Stroud to the air on first and 10. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. Here's second and ten. Here's Stroud. And his throw is going to be incomplete. But it looked like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Throwing now is Stroud. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Give them credit for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. He's got the distance, but it's no good. Wide to the right, and this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. And any time you see a kicker trot out to try one for 56 yards, you know everything's got to come off perfectly for it to have a chance. If the laces aren't quite right, if he doesn't hit the fat part of the ball just right, it's unlikely to go through, and that one winds up no good. The Bengals offense now, they head back onto the field. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown, Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, you've almost got to get down into those starters blocks like you're a sprinter.
get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier <laughs> said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. Denzel Perryman there to bring him down. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. On second down, here's Burrow. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. The third down conversion is successful. Give him 12 yards that time. Well, here's your first example of how this guy can beat you in more ways than one because they took away his arm. But he was more than happy to dissect him with his legs for that first down pickup. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. Connecting on the out route here with Higgins. So just three yards on the completion there. And it'll be second down. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. Oh, nice move. And that one opened up for him well as he'll take this down to the 26-yard line. 12 yards that time in a Cincinnati first down. Well, they continue to run the football this strong right up the middle. I don't know if they can wait till halftime to make adjustments. They better find a way to get it done series to series. I don't know if they need to sub some guys out, bring in extra people, maybe change what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball. But right now, they're running the ball very well right out and right up the middle. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Inside handoff to Mixon, and they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Four yards, the pickup, first down. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out the heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. First down, here's Burrow. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that'll bring up second down. Here's Burrow. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open to the defense to get the pass to. When you put the time in, sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just noticed right there because the best quarterback-receiver combos in the NFL, they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something pre-play, and they got it done there. Extra point by McPherson, up and good, and that makes the score 14-7. Touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. 
taken at about the one. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. A Houston's offense taken over again. That 7 nothing lead of theirs short-lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they get this game tied up. On the ground, it's Pierce to begin the drive. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Now Stroud. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. And we got a pause following the play because it appears a member of the Bengals in some discomfort. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. And they run the option here on first and 10. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. We've hit the two-minute mark in the second quarter, 14 to 7. Line of scrimmage, the 36 on second and eight. Stroud working out of the gun. That'll be pulled in downfield by Collins. Touchdown, Houston. Nico Collins, 64 yards. And the Texans are an extra point away from evening this one up. Coaches must really like to see that from the quarterback because he's had the interceptions in this game, but they're able to connect on the touchdown pass. And teammates love to see that because they know that they miss blocks during a game, but they come back and make them later on. They miss tackles, right? They miss making plays, but the spotlight is magnified on your quarterback. And when he stands up to the pressure and comes back and throws a touchdown pass after throwing some picks earlier, they feel great about that guy. And likewise for him personally, as a rookie quarterback, has to give him more confidence. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And the points, they have come fast and furious in this quarter. You really don't want to be on the defensive side of the ball right now, do you? Because you're either thinking, my replacement may get an opportunity. <laughs> Your head better be on a swivel. Totally. Or maybe I just need to get out of the game for a while because I just can't slow these guys down. They've got to figure out a way to disrupt these offenses. And typically, one guy makes a big play, and that can help change things. And they'll be looking for disruption on both sides right now. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Here's second and three. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. Smith catches left side. Seven yards there and a first down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. 
They will throw on first down with Burrow. This goes out wide for Mixon. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And they'll come up second and seven. Burrow looking to pass. They'll set up the screen here to mix him. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. That what a first down pickup of eight. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. Burrow's throw there taken in by Smith. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Again, it's Burrow. This one caught downfield by Higgins. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A good pick up there, 22. And now at this point in the first half, you've got to realize as an offense, you're not going to get it all back in one fell swoop. This is going to be about sustained drives and making sure you finish with points. And that's a good throw there for a first down. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Now it's Burrow. And he's got it. Touchdown. It's T. Higgins with a touchdown pass from Joe Burrow. And the Bengals will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. So that really an almost perfect drive as they chew up some clock and wind up scoring late in this first half. And remember, they've got a chance to double dip here because they're going to get the ball first to start the third quarter. So they potentially could go up two scores before the other guys get a chance to do anything. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead is now 21-14. to the touchdown. McPherson on to kick this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. And the Texans going to get the football one final time here in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Clock at 20 seconds to go in the half as they come up first and 10. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. So we've reached halftime here in the Queen City, and it's the Bengals leading this one. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment, but welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. The Bengals got a strong performance in that first half, 
by Joey B, their quarterback, Joe Burrow. He was slicing and dicing this defense and wound up with three touchdown passes in the first half. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. Bengals set to receive. They have the lead and the football to begin quarter number three. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. He might take this all the way. He will take this all the way. Touchdown, Bengals. It's all about taking words and bringing them to life. At halftime, I will guarantee you in their locker room. They talk about pressing the kicking game because you can get an advantage if you do it right, and they just did. And McPherson on for the extra point. He's got it as they double up the lead. This one's now 28-14. And no doubt one of the most, if not the most, exciting play we'll see in this game. The kick return all the way to the end zone for six points. again after the kick return TD here's yet another kickoff and makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23 yard line here's the Texans offense now reading for their first possession of the second half they make their second half debut here and things are looking a little bit tougher now you give up the points there Charles that touchdown drive on the other side so now it's a two score game here got to be careful they certainly do and I'm just wondering at halftime if those guys just looked into each other's eyes and realized what they've got to get done and come out a little bit more charged up because if they don't get some kind of points here that next drive that could make this a three possession game. A run by Pierce begins the second half. And a short pickup to about the 25. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Here's a second and eight. They go again with Pierce. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And Stroud now to throw. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. As we both know, there was a lot that went into why they made him their first round pick this year. And part of it was what they saw in college, his playmaking ability when things break down. As soon as he saw he wasn't getting a lane to throw, he pivoted and found an alternate way to the marker. Flushed out right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. 
The defense did its job of taking away a quick throw, but that's only half the battle because they've got to get to him before he can make a run for it. A little bit late containing him there, so he makes a nice gain out of a play that looked like it was in trouble. Hand off right side to Pierce. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Four yards the pick up, first down. Not too many more ideal situations in second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Here's Pierce on the counter. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. From the 44-yard line, here's second and a couple. Pierce now up the middle. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. Uh, give left side for Pierce. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And now you have to wonder, partner, at what point in time do they forget the running game? It's been a struggle so far in this one. I would think they'd have to start throwing it a little bit more. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Stroud looking to throw. That's into the hands of Woods. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together and he catches it and goes over the sideline. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Stroud to throw it. I uh, had a man open, but he missed him and it's incomplete. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. I guess they figure they got to start taking some chances. Here's a big one in this third quarter as he'll go for it on fourth down. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. Now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll run here with Pierce. 76 yards rushing for him now to this point. This is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. Andrew Beck. A touchdown run there from a yard out. And the Texans have got it back to within a score. So a strong drive here to lead off this third quarter and gets them right back in this football game. And I think we can safely call that a statement drive because they had to be saying, we have put our best foot forward in the first half, but we certainly mean business now. Maybe a better term, a prove it drive. They proved it to themselves that they were ready to go. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And they're within seven now at 28-21.
So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. T. Higgins leading the Cincinnati receiving core out for this upcoming series. Previous series, definitely a focal point. Three catches, the touchdown grab. As a DB, your former DB, is there a number of catches on a drive you're like, oh, he got the best of us? I'm not sure there's a number, but there's a great feel. And what he did on the last drive, yeah. <laughs> Especially with a touchdown. Yes. You're never way, happy. You're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that at the sideline, and now you're looking at your buddies and saying, okay, what are we going to do to take things away from him? Because I'm not sure the other guys can make those sort of plays. So let's make sure that we don't let him get going again. Able to make something out of nothing there. 17 yards and a first down. He's starting to fall into the category of not fair because when he's on target throwing the ball, he's dangerous. But when you add in his ability to make plays with his feet, <laughs> almost impossible. Well, yeah, exactly. They've had trouble stopping him in the secondary. This time they've got the great coverage. Oh, he can run too. He gets this one to Boyd. So the completion good for seven there. And yeah, that will bring up second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Now Burrow to throw on second down. That's caught by the tight end, Drew Sample. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 39. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 39-yard line. Burrow will throw. Short throw to Smith. Will go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. From the 33, here's a second and four. Out of the shotgun, they run with Mixon. A solid stiff arm. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 47 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. I had to do a double take on that one, Brandon, because so far in this game, we haven't seen many of his passes fall incomplete. Now a second and 10. Now Burrow. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is let you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you have taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. What a big-time drive in that situation. to the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. 
Houston set to take over. Right now, Charles, it just feels like they're trying to keep pace. They did score the touchdown last time out, but they still trail by double digits here. We'll see if this offense is once again up to the task. Yeah, and I think that after the last drive, they've got them pretty revved up, don't you think? Everything they were doing was working pretty well. They go back out there with the same mindset, play at the same tempo and the same pace. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. Stroud now on first and ten. He's got his man, that's Woods, on the out route. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that'll make it second down. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. Man in motion left, that's Collins. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. A very good move, but for a short gain out near the 32. And defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Throwing now is Stroud. That is caught. And they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Seven catches for him now in this last one, a first down. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage, so they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. First and ten, it's Pierce. That's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. 86 yards rushing for him now as he's done it on 19 carries. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Man in motion left, that's Collins. Uh, he's going to get it on the jet sweep. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Another carry for Pierce. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll go play action here with Stroud. And he finds his target. It's Schultz. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Ball at the 33, second and nine. Here's Stroud. That's complete. It's Collins. So the completion good for six yards. And now it's third and three. Third quarter. 
We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. So two of two on third down conversions on this drive, and now they face a third and three here. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. He's having a big game running the football, but that one will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't he? On second down, it's Stroud. And he's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. Trey Hendrickson showing off his pass rush repertoire that time. I remember throughout my career here, defensive coaches always say, guys, you've got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Stroud working out of the gun. incomplete but the pressure there on third down forcing the errant pass fourth down coming up great defense there on third and goal they took away everything forced him to fire that one to the sideline where no one could get it so on fourth down texan kicker kaimi fairbairn comes on from the right hash just a 34 yard attempt the kick by Fairbairn is good, and that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. So the three points there in CD, that helps them inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. On one, right? Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. On play action, they'll throw. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. And he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. Now with that interception, you feel like we got a ball game again. Remember, two-score contest and still time left here in the fourth. And in the old days, not too long gone either. Throwing the ball here would have been an absolute no-no. But the way the game's played now, throwing it makes sense. You just have to be careful when you put it in the air. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. The interception was a great starting point, but now they need points pretty quickly, down two scores. Now a handoff for Pierce. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Damian Pierce, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Texans have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So there you go. They needed a big play, and they got one there on the touchdown run. And that was a very important drive. Of course, they all are when you're trailing in the second half. But what I really liked, they didn't panic. They knew they still had time to run the football. 
and keep playing their game. Stroud's going to try to throw for the conversion. And this is caught. They got it. And that could be an important two points. It gets him back within a field goal. I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call. And he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion. And now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. I'm curious to see, Charles, about the play calling on this drive. Last time out, the interception that led to a touchdown. Here we are. I mean, very close. One score game. Yeah, and if I'm a defender... I'm actually chirping Chitty on the other side of the ball, said, hey, we picked off the last one. What you going to do about it now? <laughs> so when you do throw the football, high percentage, but throw it with confidence. Because if there's any hesitancy at all, it could end up in enemy's hands again. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right of the yard. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? And out of his hands quickly to Higgins. And Higgins is going to have a Bengals first down as he'll be brought down at the 38-yard line. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it over the middle. That's caught by Chase. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. From the 46, here's second and two. Mixing up the middle. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Pass taken in by his big tight end, and he's going to have a Bengals first down. He's going to be a pickup of about five as they convert on third and inches. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. It doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. First down. Here's Burrow. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Oh, man. For him to be that wide open and drop it. Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. Second and ten. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Denzel Perryman with a sack. A CD, a little bit of feast or famine for him. He's had some success throwing the football, but also now he's been sacked four times. Yeah, you just mentioned the four sacks, but you're right. He has managed to hang in there and make plays at times. His offensive line, they've got to figure it out and pick things up and give him more opportunities, and he has to help them by getting rid of the ball a little bit quicker as well. 
Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He'll take his shot for the end zone. Contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. McPherson now for the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it was Jamar Chase who finished it off with a touchdown reception. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. Offense back out there along with Damian Pierce. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're back because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. They'll start on the ground with Pierce. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. Stroud. And a little floater there is incomplete. And when you've thrown as many interceptions as he has in this one, you definitely start getting a little hesitant to throw the ball out wide because that's prime pick six territory. That time, he made sure the only guy who's going to catch it was sitting in the third row. The Texans on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This is third and 10. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Running it out of the gun with Pierce. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Now second and three. And they'll go right back to Pierce. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now Stroud. Short throw into the hands of Jordan. It'll go as a gain of four, and it's second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. The second down throw now from Stroud. That'll be caught left side by Woods. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Down. 
Under four to play now. Clock running. Third down. Pierce will try to pick it up. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. A strong eight yards will keep this drive rolling. The job one to pick up the first down is complete. That was a big third down conversion, but they got to watch the clock. It's starting to become their enemy a bit here in a two-score game. Which means they have to pick up the pace, right? The tempo has to be upped. And what they do is they tell the quarterback in his, in his helmet, hey, listen, when we pick up the first down here, tell everyone we're going. We're moving now to two-minute offensive phase, and everyone on the bench area, they're waving them along too. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Stroud looking to throw. And he'll get this underneath to Singletary. Now get him to the ground at the 20, following a pickup of four. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game and there he picks up another first down whatever they saw going into this one they've been able to capitalize on it and no adjustment has been made to take it away the throwing again is Stroud and I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there silently wondering does this meet the level of grounding Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. Once more from the 11, second and 10. Singletary, they'll go up the middle, and he is going to lose yardage here. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive. And normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, looked like the offensive line let him down a little bit. Yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff him for a loss. Stroud on third down now. And this is going to be incomplete. So a big one coming here for Kaimi Fairbear from the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Fairbear able to put this one through, and this is back down to a seven-point game. So you knew one way or another that they needed the two scores. They get the easy one out of the way. Now they'll get the ball back, hopefully. Yeah, and the question is, how do you accomplish that? Do you onside kick it? Or since you have all three timeouts, do you kick it deep? To me, I'm playing field position. With all three timeouts, I kick it deep and try and pin them back there. Fairbear now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. The Bengals set to take over. Well, they can smell victory, partner. They can see it on the horizon, but certainly we're not done yet. Your defense still has three timeouts, and obviously this is a very slim lead they're holding on to. And let's face it, the easiest way to get this done Challenge your ground game, challenge your offensive line, your tight ends, your receivers. Anyone who's going to lay down a block, don't let there be penetration because they're going to stack the line of scrimmage and maybe bring extra people to the ball. If you can do that, make them burn their timeouts, run out the clock, life will be good. But if you really want to gamble a little bit, a quick play action, quick throw, might be able to get it done. Just make sure it's not incomplete and stop the clock. You'd have to think likely another running play coming here, second and 11. He's going to get it again, just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts 
as he'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Throwing now is Joe Burrow. Got a man, it's Chase, he completes it. And he goes out of bounds, just shy of the 45. Probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They try to eat some clock with Mixon. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Again, it's Mixon. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying it around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. On third down, Nixon, and he gets this to the 48, but no further. Well short of the line to gain. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive could take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Here's first and 10. Stroud. Taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Well, it took us until the final play, Charles, to officially decide a winner. Although on that last play, they were so backed up, it would have taken a miracle, and they couldn't get that miracle done. Well, I like how you stayed with it because we both knew that this had to go down to the last play, and neither side was going to exhale until that play concluded because we've seen the improbable before. A couple of laterals, maybe some poor defense on the back end. They might have gone all the way to the end zone. In this case, though, it didn't happen. Perhaps next time. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Bengals as we say so long from Cincinnati.